the clear tropical waters of Belize are amongst the most biodiverse in the Caribbean. At least 42 species of sharks and rays occur here, playing a vital role in maintaining the health of these coral reef ecosystems, which each year attract tourists from across the world. Yet the local communities who rely on tourism are often unaware of the value of sharks and rays to their livelihoods. Unsustainable shark fishing in Belizean waters, largely by neighbouring countries, but also through bycatch locally, is driving many species into decline. Rachel Graham, director of the Wildlife Conservation Society's Gulf and Caribbean programme, is spearheading conservation for Belize's sharks, replacing fear with knowledge and generating strong local support for their protection. Working alongside the government, Rachel and her team are developing Belize's first ever National Shark Action Plan, ensuring that sharks are included in the management of marine protected areas. Locals are doing their part too, releasing accidentally caught sharks instead of selling or eating them, and coastal communities are increasingly protective of the sharks in their waters, reporting illegal fishing activity. Rachel's program is also giving local school children and communities the chance to participate in research, bringing people into direct contact with the sharks they're now trying to save. As a result, attitudes are changing and sharks are now being seen as valuable friends rather than fearsome enemies. Arunachal Pradesh and the eastern slopes of the Himalayas. One of India's last remaining wildernesses, this remote region is India's least populated and most biodiverse state. Rising up sharply from the coast, its mountains are home to two-thirds of all India's species, from tigers and elephants to an astonishing array of birds, moths and other creatures. However, as in all of India, human population growth is accelerating. Large-scale development projects are becoming more frequent and wild habitat is being lost to roads, towns and dams. Leading conservation efforts in the region is Ramana Atriya of Ecosystems India. Originally a trained astronomer, Ramana has been so inspired by these rainforests he has turned his focus back to Earth. In an area where much is still unknown, he and his team are carrying out vital research to guide effective conservation. Early government efforts here fail to include local tribal communities in plans for conservation and development. Ramana is changing this, setting up formal organisations for the management of wildlife sanctuaries across the state. His team is providing a direct link between local people and forestry officials so that conservation and livelihood options such as ecotourism can be developed together. In this way, Ramana is handing responsibility back to the local communities, replacing distrust and indifference with a new sense of local pride. the Dinaric Arc of the Eastern Adriatic. Spanning 10,000 square kilometers and eight countries, this region is characterized by a dramatic karstic landscape of jagged mountains, sinkholes, and vast underground caverns. These uniquely biodiverse caves are home to an array of bizarre and highly specialized species, a number of which are found nowhere else on Earth. But very little is known about them or their lives in the darkness. This is limiting effective management of these caves at a time when they are under clear new threats from pollution and development. President of the Croatian Biospeleological Society, Jana Bedek, is determined to change this. 
Until now, protection efforts have been uncoordinated, but with her team, Yana is strengthening karstic conservation throughout the entire Danaric Arc. Bringing together experts from all eight countries, they are building the first scientific network where knowledge and information can be shared, improving understanding of these caverns and providing the evidence for stronger protection. Local people used to know where cave mouths lay, but now only the oldest can find them. Time is running out to pass on their memories, and Yana is recording their knowledge whilst raising awareness everywhere of why the karst caves need to be protected, such as for clean groundwater for drinking and irrigation. Yana is ensuring that the conservation of the biodiversity underground is given as much attention as that above, and helping to prevent species becoming lost to extinction before they have even been discovered. The open plains of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Great herds of saiga antelope were once common across the vast steppe of the Ustyurt Plateau. A curious looking animal, the saiga is highly adapted to its arid environment and is both culturally and economically important to the region's communities. But since the collapse of the Soviet Union, saiga populations have plummeted, declining by as much as 95% in the last 10 years. Uncontrolled hunting and a surge in trade in saiga horn for Chinese medicine has left the species critically threatened with extinction. Elena Bikova of the Saiga Conservation Alliance is leading efforts to conserve the plateau's remaining saigas. Working directly with local communities, she's reawakening traditional pride in the species. By engaging people to become Saiga friends and involving people in participatory monitoring, her team is using local knowledge to inform effective management whilst dissuading people from hunting. Central to Eleanor's approach is the evaluation of her previous work of the past seven years. By carrying out in-depth surveys, she aims to show how public engagement has led to changes in attitudes and behavior at different levels of the community. In doing so, she hopes to identify the strengths and weaknesses of her approach, so providing a critical guide to future Saiga recovery. the lush rainforests of the Gunung Palung National Park, Indonesia. Located in a remote corner of southwestern Borneo, the forests here teem with life. The communities that border the park are, however, very poor, and many people resort to illegal logging to earn a living. This is bad news for the wildlife that relies on these hardwood forests for survival. Gunung Palung is home to some 2,500 orangutan, roughly a tenth of the global population. Their long-term future is dependent on these forests, 98% of which could disappear within 10 years. Hotling Ompusungu, a dental surgeon by profession, is working with her NGO ASRI to address the root causes of deforestation, poor health and poverty. From the Asri Clinic that borders the National Park, Hotlin and her team are providing healthcare incentives to dissuade people from logging. Teams of forest guardians, locals from villages neighboring the park, are trained to monitor logging activity while spreading the message that conservation matters. Those villages where logging has stopped receive extra discounts for treatment at the clinic, whilst those who still log are encouraged to participate in ASRI's livelihoods programs to introduce them to alternatives to logging. So far, more than 18,000 villagers have benefited from improved dental and medical care. Thanks to Hotlin's leadership, local people are learning the importance of preserving Gunung Palung and how cessation of logging can lead to better health and better lives.
Western Russia is the country's most heavily populated region, but it's also a key area for bats. Areas of old growth forest standing for more than 300 years still occur here. But as this is lost to development, natural roosting spots for bats are being destroyed. Bats, alongside other precious wildlife, are in decline, and 17 of Russia's 40 species are threatened with extinction. Forced to find alternative roosts in people's houses and derelict buildings, bats increasingly rely on the tolerance of people. Dr. Igor Prokofayev of the Grassroots Alliance Perezvet is engaging local people to take an interest in bats and to protect their last natural and man-made habitats. Igor leads the very first bat conservation movement in Russia, and education is a big part of his work. A new bat conservation center is helping show how the presence of bats means free ecosystem services that help the economy, including insect control and crop pollination. Replacing fear with curiosity, a growing army of volunteers is taking part in Russia's first public bat monitoring program. The data collected will inform effective habitat protection whilst filling the knowledge gap on bats. Igor plans to expand his program throughout the entire region and to create Russia's first dedicated bat conservation NGO to ensure bats receive the attention they deserve. eastern foothills of the Andes and the montane forests of the southern Yungas. Extending along the border between Bolivia and Argentina, these moist forests provide a complex mosaic of habitats that are globally important. Eighty or so of the species here are endemic, including nine birds, 58 trees and 13 amphibians. But these forests and their wildlife are under increasing threat. Deforestation has already reduced the Yungas to 40% of its original size. Parrots such as the Alder Amazon and military macaw are amongst the species most at risk. Increasingly threatened as their habitat is destroyed, large numbers are also captured each year for the illegal pet trade or killed by farmers as pests. Since 2003, biologist Luis Rivera and his NGO Sebio Foundation have led regional efforts to conserve these colorful and charismatic birds. Using the parrots as the stars of talks and puppet shows to engage people, Luis's team has already reached and inspired more than 7,000 children and adults in Bolivia and Argentina to stop raiding nests and take better care of the forest environment. Involving local people in parrot monitoring and working closely with municipal governments to inform conservation policy, Luis is helping to not only protect parrots, but also secure a future for their valuable forest habitat right across the southern Yungas. As WWF marks its 50th anniversary and a decade of working with the Whitley Fund for Nature, together we're celebrating the unique contribution our partnership makes to conservation. For 10 years, the Whitley Award, sponsored by WWF, has achieved extraordinary things, funding the work of amazing people around the world, men and women dedicated to forging local solutions where vulnerable wildlife and communities live side by side. In 2009, we recognized Gladys Kalema Zikusoka for her work to protect Uganda's critically endangered mountain gorillas. The first project of its kind to combine conservation with public health, the project is making ecotourism more sustainable by reducing disease exchange between humans and wild gorillas. Both are healthier as a result. And teamed with education, the project is helping local people understand how their futures and that of gorillas 
are closely interlinked. On Costa Rica's Caribbean coast, the future of the critically endangered leatherback turtle has been given a huge boost thanks to the work of 2005 award winner Didier Chacon. Didier inspired 12,000 volunteers to protect nesting turtles and their eggs from poachers and introduced alternative livelihood options to tackle poverty. As a result, 140,000 leatherback hatchlings are now safely returned to the sea each year, a vital contribution towards their long-term survival. Winning projects provide measurable benefits to people and wildlife, and 2007 winner Emilian Stoinov's work is a case in point. West Bulgaria is one of the last places in Europe where people still live alongside wild bears, wolves and vultures. But in recent years, farmers have turned to poisons to control predators, and local wildlife has been hit hard. Emilian worked closely with local farmers to bring tolerance and improve pastoral management. In just one year, livestock predation by wild animals fell by 90%, and retaliatory killings have virtually stopped. These are just a few of the remarkable projects we've supported but the partnership between WWF and Whitley Fund for Nature hasn't stood still. Conservationists the world over need to work together more if we're to succeed in protecting our planet. So in 2010, we introduced the Challenge Grant to help previous winners of the Whitley Award and WWF experts to share ideas, resources and solutions for even greater impact on the ground. The first winner of this grant, Sergei Bereznuk, now works alongside WWF Russia in the Russian Far East to challenge two of the greatest threats to the survival of Amur tigers and leopards, poaching and forest fire. With fewer than 40 Amur leopards remaining, this work is vital to prevent their extinction in the wild. The achievements of Sergei, but also Emilian, Didier, Gladys and all our other award winners are something we're incredibly proud of. All of them are making a real difference where it matters most. <laughs>